One of the most fallacious arguments that you will come across is on healthcare. Health is a standard measure for quality of life. Naturally then, a quality healthcare system aimed at improving the health of the population and preventing disease should and must be adequately developed. However, healthcare, like many other things, has become a private business, aimed not at improving the lives of people, but at maximizing profits. If you did not run at a profit, or if you didn't aim for profits, there would be no point running a private business in the first place. However, that's not the point. His argument is to say that it's because of the private sector or because of private business that is the reason for expense of American healthcare costs. It's got nothing at all to do with the private sector. In fact, the private sector's got nothing at all to do with the cost whatsoever. The cost is to blame on all of the government intervention that basically led to the shortage of supply and the increase in demand. We have all heard of, and in many cases even experienced, heartbreaking stories in which seniors had to choose between medication or food for the month, or children in need of surgery and medication that can't get treated because their parents can't afford insurance. That's basing things off of today. That's ignoring the fact that people live under a real high inflationary rate based economy because of the mixed economy. All the social security that the country cannot afford. And that's one of the biggest contributing factors to the United States $21 trillion debt level. Through the American Medical Association monopoly where they restricted the supply and increased the demand that led to the soaring costs of medical care, as well of course the over-regulation of the private sector, again restricting the supply, and then the third-party payer system taking away competition where consumers cannot shop around for the cheaper cost. Instead, you monopolise the healthcare system where a third party gets to determine the cost. So I'm really not surprised why private pharmaceutical companies get away with that collusion because of government's intervention. But what I find truly magical is that you try to make it out as if there's only that of what you see in America today to that of the NHS as if no other argument exists. Healthcare, a fundamental human right, has become a massive business at which the centre is profit. No, healthcare is not a right. It never was a right and it never will be a right. To say that you have a right to the money another individual earns is for you to call them your slave. Everyone from insurance companies to hospitals to pharmaceutical and medical device companies are pulling in larger and larger profits, many times at the expense of the patients whom they're supposed to be helping. Again, the very reason why there's a very big problem in the United States today with the private pharmaceutical companies that have got away with a collusion and driven the costs up is because the absence of competition due to the third party payer system which is anti-capitalist. This drive for higher and higher profits essentially ensures that medical treatment will always be expensive for the vast majority of people. The very reason why medical costs are through the roof is because of the American Medical Association, because the US government had granted the AMA a monopoly by restricting the supply of medical schools closing down all of those medical schools and increasing demand as the US population vastly increased over that time period of a century, then it was no surprise. It's the laws of supply and demand. In pursuit of higher and higher profits, medical personnel have been and continue to be heavily overworked, sometimes even being driven to become totally disillusioned with the medical field, sometimes even resulting in suicide. Again, that's the fault of the US government for restricting the supply of medical doctors and increasing the demand through the vast increase of the US population. However, most importantly, when you turn your attention to the British NHS, even for as back as since its inception in 1948, the NHS has been leaving thousands in neglect every single year. And there have been cases where the doctors and nurses just cannot sustain it. And many people, who are left in neglect die of heart attacks due to the heart disease problems and they die of you know cancer because of the neglect. When everybody starts demanding 
there's not enough doctors and nurses to even sustain that. Even long before the PFI deals, even long before anything of the current mess of what we see the NHS today, the NHS has always been faced with these very problems, so that entire argument just goes flying right out the window. Rather than making medical education more accessible, so that more doctors would graduate every year and hence help alleviate the epidemic of exhausted and overworked doctors, capitalists and the governments they lobby and control would rather continue overworking a smaller amount of medical personnel and hide away access to medical knowledge behind incredibly expensive university fees. How can you claim to be pro-capitalist and go against that of the free market system and claim to be for the free market at the same time. You can't, it's impossible, it's completely and wholly irrational. You've said that these people, and you've conceded to the fact that what they did through government intervention, you then saw the restriction of supply, the increased demand, that's essentially against everything to do with the free market healthcare system, it's against the free market entirely, completely, but you ignore the fact that by going against the free market is inherently anti-capitalist. That entire argument makes no logical, makes no rational sense whatsoever. You cannot claim to be against a free market system and then claim to be capitalist at the same time. Another symptom of the many issues capitalism causes within the US would be the narcotic addiction crisis, which has caused hundreds of thousands of deaths and disrupted the lives of millions of people. This very issue has been caused by the overprescription of opioid pain medication by tens of thousands of private US medical practitioners pushed by the giant US pharmaceutical industry in what essentially is mass murder carried out in the never-ending pursuit of higher profits. Unsurprisingly, this has resulted in record profits to the tune of over $35 billion for corporations such as Purdue Pharma. The third party payer system is in place and therefore the consumer does not have the freedom to shop around. There's no straight transaction between the consumer and provider. Therefore, there's no capitalist healthcare market today in the United States. You have the private pharmaceutical companies because of that in the absence of competition, that have been able to shaft the consumer by, you know, driving up the cost through a collusion. What you also ignore is that the Food and Drug Administration has regulated and restricted what people can and cannot take. You've taken away the people's right because what the Food and Drug Administration has done is it's illegalised the very drugs that could potentially save thousands of people's lives. At the same time that regular people are either unable to see a doctor or get treatment in fear of being financially ruined, giant mega billion dollar tech companies and CEOs are evading paying billions of dollars in taxes so that they could avoid the inconvenience of having to contribute to any national health programs. This tax avoidance of what you see is not illegal as such because it's not the same thing as tax evasion. It's a sign that your socialism doesn't work. You don't understand, again, the consequences. You don't understand that what you put into practice is not the same thing as your theoretical ideas, your wet dreams that you think you can just raise the tax rates and all of a sudden, if you raise the tax rates, that they'll pay it. That wasn't the case in the 1950s in the United States. There is something called the Laffer Curve and every economist agrees with it. And the Laffer Curve is something where if you go past that threshold and you move over the threshold, there's a drop-off point. And that drop-off point is where people will start to find ways around paying it. So you've admitted the very fact that they restrict the marketplace, restrict the supply and increase the demand. What the hell? Has that got to do with a free market in healthcare? These true patriots, who are always looking out for the well-being of the nation, are also the most unflinching supporters of the privatization and demolition of any and all public programs. They proudly wave their national flag around as their direct decisions result in the suffering and death of hundreds of thousands of their own countrymen every single year. Those without insurance, those with pre-existing conditions, whatever those are, those who simply don't have the money, all left to rot and die in hospital waiting rooms as the personnel, equipment and expertise lay dormant, collecting dust without being used. After all of your socialism in the mixed economy had drove American people up to their eyeballs in debt, drove their real inflationary rate through the roof, where the United States is going to face an even bigger bubble problem, uh, irrespective of Donald Trump being president or not, 
It was all thanks to all of your social security. It was all thanks to your government intervention that drove the American cost of living through the roof. Then you tax them half to death. You cripple them. You send them so far into debt that they're now more than $21 trillion in debt because of a large contributing factor being down to the welfare state and social security. And then after you do all of that, you then complain and have the audacity to complain about the costs of not just healthcare, but the costs of living that they cannot afford to pay for their own health insurance. What the hell were you expecting? In the same vein, from 2001 up to 2018, under Bush, Obama and Trump, the US taxpayers have spent $5.6 trillion, trillion dollars on privately delivered for-profit medical care with unimpressive results in terms of population health and life expectancy. Despite this enormous investment of money in a chaotic, ineffective private system, the US Treasury has continuously maintained it could not possibly finance a national health program for the population. Britain is currently paying for a population of 70 million people for something of over the tune of 120 billion pounds. Now you could again go on about the American healthcare costs, but that's not an argument because it's against the free market and a free market in healthcare is far cheaper than that of the current day American healthcare system and it would be far, far cheaper than that of the British NHS. The American healthcare system has its problem because of your government intervention in the healthcare system and then you try to pretend that that's not the issue, that it's just because it's the private sector. You basically took away competition, you took away the consumer's choice, you laid on a third party payer system, you even restricted the supply, you even admitted that earlier on. On top of all this, the business of advertisement is busy trying to sell healthy people treatments they don't need while neglecting the seriously ill. They even go as far as advertising surgeries that have been proven to be absolutely useless. The catch? Those same surgeries are very, very expensive. So much for the efficiency of the market. Again, how can you say that it's the inefficiency of the market when you've basically restricted the marketplace and strangled it half to death through that of government intervention and through the Food and Drug Administration? <laughs> I don't even know how you even work that logic out. On the topic of the market, some may say that this is corporatism at work and pure capitalism, whatever that is, would fix these issues. I have dealt with the corporatism issue before in a separate video of mine. You can find the link in the description. That's because it is corporatism. And then you say whatever the hell a free market is, whatever the hell capitalism is. I mean, although the 19th century wasn't exactly 100% truly free and, and there were periods of government intervention back in the first industrial revolution in the United States in certain parts, there was strong freedom and we saw the economy faring better off. And with regards to the consumer price index as a whole, as I've pointed out many times before, is that between 1840 to 1900, the consumer price index was continuously dropping and the valuation of the gold standard was continuously increasing. That is to say that the society as a whole was becoming richer. To go through it quickly though, capitalists want as much profit as they can possibly get. It makes perfect sense for them to lobby the government and manipulate the market to reach that end. Capitalism has a natural tendency towards monopoly. That's why hospitals have been on a 20 year merger spree. That's why they're buying up doctors practices and charging monopoly prices for both hospital and physician care. That's why drug companies are manipulating patent law and charging monopoly prices for drugs that usually cost fractions of a dollar to produce, all in order to maximize profits. Again, this is an argument that I've covered before on the monopoly myth. It's just unbelievable that in the 19th century there were no monopolies with the giant corporations and trusts. The consumer price index was continuously dropping. That's the exact opposite of meaning of that of a monopoly and nowhere in history has there been monopolies through that of predatory pricing and essentially when you claimed earlier on that the lobby that of government to go against the free market that is inherently anti-capitalist. How can you claim to be pro-capitalist and anti-free market at the same time? That's like saying you can have socialism and liberty at the same time. To embarrass the system even further, 
horribly blockaded third world countries like Cuba have managed to provide far better healthcare to virtually all its population despite its lack of resources, an illegal embargo that has impoverished the country for more than half a century, and constant attempts at destabilization by the US. Again, that's an erroneous argument with regards to the healthcare system, and you can hear this argument here. Apologies for Fidel Castro's brutal socialist dictatorship usually qualify their praise, but they're quick to pivot to his number one talking point. Socialist health care in Cuba was awesome. Castro care is a dream we should all aspire to. To a certain extent, they have a point with one proviso. The only way to get good health care in Castro's Cuba is to be a tourist with lots of cold hard cash. Another way to do it is to be part of the political elite, part of Castro's administration. But if you happen to be a Cuban, you happen to be a citizen, you have very limited access to anything that would represent real healthcare the way you and I know it. The reality is there are very few hospitals and they are crumbling. There's plenty of doctors, but they earn nothing, so they're usually driving cabs instead of providing care. There's little access to medicine. There's little access to the equipment that you would need. Castro care, as it turns out, is just socialist propaganda. Some may say that the Nordic or European model is the way to go then. The problem with this is that the European people got these concessions from their governments through bloody and difficult struggle by far left groups that literally and figuratively pried these concessions out of the capitalist class. In the end though, they were just that, concessions, which can be taken away at any time. As we see now, slowly but surely austerity has taken root and is slowly eroding all the public programs that Europeans have enjoyed since the end of World War II. How the hell can you have austerity, which means to live within your means, and that of a very large deficit at the same time? It's all capitalism's fault for all of the government intervention, isn't it? <laughs> I don't even know how you even worked that logic out. If you've got any questions you would like to ask, comment in the comment section below. Like the video, share the video, and thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Cheers.